Welcome back to the Daily Edition. Well, we all feel tired at times, sluggish, sluggish rather. Perhaps I'm feeling a bit like that now and perhaps in need of more sleep. But when you struggle to stay awake and find yourself nodding off unexpectedly, it could be narcolepsy. It's a serious, rare disorder affecting three million people worldwide. A highly misunderstood condition, narcolepsy is not like what you see in the movies. Narcolepsy is an autoimmune disorder where the brain loses the ability to maintain normal sleep and wake cycles. Inventor Thomas Edison suffered from the disorder, so did Winston Churchill and Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain. Late night talk show host Jimmy Kimmel has also been diagnosed. Earlier this month, a US teen went viral after posting this video in which she has a narcoleptic attack. She's among the 70% of narcoleptics who also suffer from cataplexy or sudden bouts of muscle weakness. Experts say the condition is more common than we may realise. So how can you tell if you're just tired or suffering from something more sinister? For this week's Spotlight, we're joined by sleep physician Dr David Cunnington in Melbourne and author and narcolepsy advocate Julie Flygar in Los Angeles. Great to talk to you both. David, I'll start with you. Talk us through the difference between feeling tired and actually having narcolepsy. So all of us feel tired, we all get that from time to time, but usually we can identify something that's causing it and when we address that, the tiredness goes away. The difference with narcolepsy is the tiredness is there all the time and then people address nutrition and health, make sure they're sleeping well, look after their mental health and still they're tired day after day, week after week. That's when we should wonder about narcolepsy, mm. once we've addressed all those things. Yeah, indeed. We also saw that one of the major symptoms is cataplexy. Around 70% of people that have narcolepsy suffer from cataplexy, which is that just complete dropping of, of all of your, your muscle tone, and it's completely involuntary. Julie, you were diagnosed with narcolepsy when you were 24. We have a photo of you asleep in a, a Starbucks. When did you know that something was wrong? How old were you? Actually, the first thing that I noticed was that my knees started buckling when I was laughing at a joke with a friend. It was the strangest feeling. And that kept happening always when I was laughing at a joke or when I was annoyed. I also entered law school and I was having a hard time getting through my coursework, but I just thought I didn't have what it took to be a law student. I thought it was my willpower. Mm. And it took a very long time before I figured out it maybe it was a sleep issue. So you don't want to walk around not laughing at jokes or, or if you're getting annoyed by something often that is involuntary. Um, what can you do about it to manage it? It's really difficult. I have to sometimes stop myself from joking and say to my friends, I can't, I can't, my cataplexy. Uh, and at times I can't control it. And even though I take the best treatments, I still sometimes collapse completely to the ground. How does that affect you in everyday life? Can you still drive a car? Yes, I do. I am very aware of when cataplexy is going to happen. I have a very good sense of it, so I wouldn't drive if I thought I was going to have cataplexy. Right. But for the most part, with medication and I take two naps a day, I am able to work full time and I drive. Mm -hmm. David, is there a profile of a typical person that has narcolepsy? Does, does Julie fit the mould of a typical person? In some respects, Julie does. The typical thing will be there'll be some sort of trigger that comes on maybe late teenage years, early 20s, maybe an illness, uh, and that's followed then by maybe a partial recovery and then tiredness, and then sometimes the emergence of these other symptoms that we've talked about, cataplexy, hallucinations on the borderline of wake and sleep, or feeling paralysed just on the verge of waking up. Mm. Well, we know that 91% of primary care doctors are not comfortable diagnosing narcolepsy. Uh, so, David, if people aren't, aren't diagnosed and they can't get treatment, I would imagine, and what sort of treatments would they be looking for? Yeah, so there's a range of different treatments and the diagnosis is really an issue and it's something when I see people who've had narcolepsy, there's always a journey they've been on, a story they tell about lots of different diagnoses. So that's the reason we really want to try and increase awareness about mm. symptoms and not just for people with narcolepsy but also for doctors and health professionals as well. And Julie, you're very passionate about raising awareness of narcolepsy. What would you say is the biggest misconception about this condition? Well, people often, when I tell them I have narcolepsy, they think it's a joke and they start laughing. Yeah. And it's a serious condition that's absolutely changed my life. 
So I really like to let people know that, no, this is a real disorder, and it affects a lot of people. It's not really as rare as we think it is. Your friends and your neighbors, they have narcolepsy. And that's why I founded the Narcolepsy Not Alone campaign, to show the actual faces of narcolepsy around the world. We have people in Australia and all over, 42 countries around the world, saying, I'm a person with narcolepsy and I'm not alone. Mm. Well, I'm sure that that is helping people all over the world. Julie's book, Wide Awake and Dreaming, a memoir of narcolepsy, is available now. We will have more information about the disorder. You can head over to our Facebook page. Thank you so much to both of you, Julie and David, for your time today. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Monique. Thank you.